in the beginning, there was nothing. Then God said, let there be music. And God heard the music, and it was good. And then God wanted more music, so he created producers. But these producers didn't know how to read sheet music or play keys. So God created Scalar, and thus the light upon the universe shone on producers around the world forever. And this is when some DJs and producers started creating beats. It is time to spread the word. So I hope you guys liked the intro. I really enjoyed making it. And if you want me to make more sort of weird intros like that, um, or if you, even if you have like any ideas, uh, put them in the comments. Just let me know and um, I'll give it a go because it's just a lot of fun. So let's get straight into Scala. So Scala um, is just amazing. I've been using it for a, a couple of years now, but the last three or four months I've been really getting into it and just wanted to explain to you a little bit about what you can get out of it. So there's kind of two ways to use Scalar in my opinion. And that is the first one is the detect mode, which is kind of the default when you open it. You can see here detect mode. And detect will just literally detect the chords that you play. So for example, I'm playing C major. It'll just detect that if I press the record button. So just press record here. Okay, so it's detecting those chords. I can play any sort of weird chord. Okay, you'll notice that A sharp major is gray, whereas the other chords are blue. And the reason for that is I'm currently in the key of C major scale, and um, A sharp major only shares some notes with the key major, with the C major scale. And you can see um, there's like a little note there that's grayed out. So that note there. B flat, A sharp isn't in C major. And that's that's why there's a color difference. And that could be helpful, whereas all these other chords do fit within C major. Just thought I'd uh, put that in there just quickly, because I think that's quite an important sort of as, uh, facet to all of this. The other thing is you can actually choose the key, uh, the root key of your song. So um, if you don't know much about, and I'm, I'm definitely one of these people, I don't, I don't know a lot about what a Lydian mode is, but it's really useful to see the descriptions here. So if I want to make a song that's dreamy or ethereal, I go into Lydian mode and I can select Lydian mode chords, okay? And it kind of just selects them for me here. And I can select any of those, bring them into the patterns and just use them. But today's video is not going to be about detect mode. I just wanted to talk about it very quickly. What I want to do today is um, use a scalar to give me some ideas about what chords to use. And then we can use all of the things that are inside of scalar, like the performance modes, the groupings, the humanization, and all the instruments that are in um, scalar to help us make a track. And once you can kind of get your bass chords down, it's actually pretty easy to make a track. And this is what I'm going to show you today. So there are two kind of main areas. Actually, there's three. There's scales as well. And we've just had a look at scales. And, um, you know, as I said, it will just suggest scales in that key. And then there's songs. And songs are basically genres. So there's all these different genres with all these different chord profiles or templates, whatever you want to call them. And then there's artists. Apparently, according to Plugin Boutique, there's more than 200 artist templates in this system to choose from, which is super cool. And some of these artists are pretty well known, like MJ Cole, for example, and uh, Kyle Cox. So that's really useful to have, but I just do tend to go to the genres, and that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to make a fairly sort of basic house track, just for the purposes of demonstration, a bit of workflow. So let's go straight into house one. What I'm going to do then is bind the chords that I have selected for that template with the keyboard. So I can just play them with my fingers. So if I play C, it'll play F major 9. If I play D, etc. As you can see, it plays all the chords in that house range, which is super cool because 
when you start recording the MIDI, you can record in kind of a rhythm that you like. For example, like this. Etc. So well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I've got the metronome, get that on. I'm just going to record the four codes in straight vanilla, four to the floor, uh, just for the just to be fast, basically. Let's just do that now. Okay, and let's. Let's loop that. It's hard really to, um, I should get a microphone stand. It's hard really to play and talk with a, your left hand on the mic, but uh, it is it is being done. So you just want to check that it's quantized. So you just quickly quantize those babies and we'll legato those babies. And then what we can do is we can go back into Scalar and we can look at the performance, see if you like the performance. I'm not necessarily 100% enamored by it. So what we can do is click on the perform button and let's choose strumming. So we'll just strum through. So strumming is nice, but it's still a bit mechanical. So what we can do now is click on humanize and that um, randomizes the velocity. So the notes are being played just slightly at different velocities. You can also randomize the timing, but you can randomize both, which is what I'm going to do now. There's also a quantizer swing, but we're not gonna use that here. So you have a nice, beautiful, randomized sound, and we're going to also change to grand piano. So it's just a bit sharper and nicer. Now, one of the things that uh, Captain Chords can do and Scalar can't do, and that's not many things, but um, the instruments in Captain Chords are just a touch better than these instruments. And you can actually um, you can actually change them. Like you can change the filters on them, and you can just you can do twe tweaks to the to the instruments. Whereas in Scalar, you really you can't this is basically what you have so but you know obviously you can use other effects and filters and reverbs from your daw uh, to enhance what you've got so okay so now once we've got the first layer what we can do is simply duplicate that layer just remember the midi chords the midi notes that are playing represent chords so they're really just playing notes they're going to represent these chords now if we just solo this one here, what we can do is, for example, bring in strings. Yeah, let's bring some strings in. Um, so it's going to play exactly the same chords. I'm just going to reduce the volume because I think the strings are loud from memory. Yeah. Lovely. I'm just going to put a, a side chain. Okay, so just to put a bit of side chain on there just to make it sound a bit better. And I'm going to duplicate that again. And this time we're going to um, add a bass track. We'll just select any old bass track, chorus bass will do. And we will just go ahead and select, because we've selected the bass uh, performance mode. So all of these are bass lines, basically. Um, so you can select what they call basic. I'm not really sure what that means. Straight, I guess, is D, D, D. Let's just listen to the straight. So there's different choices here. Let's, let's go house one since we chose that as the template. So we've inherited the uh, side chain. We can just take that off for now. Actually, let's leave it on. We take the metronome off. 
And now let's duplicate that. The string is really loud. And while we're at it, let's just take that strumming off, actually, because it's a, in a house track, I think it's a little bit annoying <laughs> to hear that. Now, what we're going to do here now is add a lead. We're going to add a lead sound, which will come in the shape of a super saw and now we're going to choose melody and we'll choose one of these motifs I'm not sure what they're going to sound like but let's just choose them So I'm just going to choose a drum loop, just any old drum loop. I'm not going to spend too much time looking for drums. And finally some hi-hats. And that's pretty much the basics, uh, the nuts and bolts, the meat and potato of the track. And um, what we're gonna do now is do some duplicative, um, duplicate, I'm gonna duplicate them. Um, I'm just gonna put the microphone down and do that. So, give me a sec. So what we're gonna do is, we've got kind of everything together but I'm going to arrange the track so that um, we start with less and we build up. So bear with me. Okay, so as you can see there, um, taking building box away from a standard loop creates a song. Once you add vocals, um, you feel like there's more of a song, then you can start adding filters and other effects to change the dynamics of the song. And before you know it, you got a song and that was made almost completely with Scalar. So another thing you could do, say you want to tweak what's in the lead. Because it's too repetitive, you want to change things up. You can do something called MIDI Capture. So you just click on MIDI Capture and you just press play. So we've captured that, it's kind of recorded it, and press stop, and you can just drag this MIDI into a new track, and there you go, it's actually captured all the MIDI that you're playing. Now if you um, just wanna play that, but with a different sound you just go ahead and bring in a different instrument so we bring in diva for example in there there's diva
And um, if you don't like the media or you're a bit bored of it, you want to sort of change things up a bit, that's also pretty easy to do. You can just take bits and pieces away from that MIDI. And then incorporate it back into the song. Just pan it a little bit. And then of course you can do other things to, um, for example, you can automate the, um, the filter. You just automate the filter, which I love doing, as you can tell. So you have a world of musical MIDI love with Scalar in front of you. And I suggest if you haven't used it, if you've bought it, you don't use it much, just take it off the shelf, you know, give it a good polish and open it and start messing around. If you've got any questions at all, um, if you want to see more about Scalar, let me know in the comments. If you want to see more of my future videos, because I definitely will do some more videos on Scalar, um, subscribe and press the bell so you know when my next video is coming. And I do apologize for posting my own music in my channel. I know that's probably annoys people if they come to the channel just to see my training videos. They don't want to see my songs. But uh, the songs are a good indication of how I use Scalar actually, and sometimes Captain Epic to make songs. So um, yeah, I think um, it's all, all useful. It's all educational and it, you know, it can only help if you want to learn about these types of things. So um, once again, I really appreciate your time. Sorry about the, the lame intro. I just enjoyed doing it so much. Bye.